Good morning, everybody. My name is Scott Richter. I'm on the board here at the MTA. and have the privilege of interviewing Josh Berger from Wellington Management this morning. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, asset allocation, uh, technical analysis, and how that's changed in the past few years. So, Josh, let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, talk a little bit about um, the asset allocation space, how it's changed in the sense that it is more willing to embrace technical type strategies. Mm -hmm. And what's caused that change, and uh, how far do you think the runway is in yeah. this, you know, for this opportunity? It's a great question, and, and thank you very much you know, for sure. the time. It's great to be here. Um, when I think about the evolution of asset allocation-oriented strategies over, over the past 10-plus you know, years, there's been an increasing move to a, a focus on outcome-oriented investing. Hmm. So think about having an objective of inflation plus 5%. Versus Cash, a style box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or just a static allocation to equities to deliver some 60, equity, 40. like yeah, a balanced fund type okay. approach. Right. And so I think um, with that outcome-oriented shift, there's an opportunity in lots of different ways through liquid alternatives or more traditional multi-asset portfolios to include technical analysis. Okay. And in particular, I know last year we talked about fusion analysis of technicals and fundamentals. I think there's a greater application of technicals and fundamentals together, and when we go into the multi-asset space, having the discipline to protect capital in periods of time when trends are breaking down, but things stay cheap, well, the number one tr uh, challenge as a value investor is the value trap. What's the best way to correct against that? Having some technical input or control or a worldview that enables you to avoid those value traps over time. Mm -hmm. So we find the use of technicals and fundamentals together as a better way to drive client outcomes. Let me ask you a question about that, uh, because we, we all know we have clients. Yeah. Um, how is it um, that you communicate technical quantitative concepts to uh, potentially lay persons or people on boards or somebody, a pension fund that you yeah. might hire, so that they, they kind of get it, yeah, yeah. they understand it and can internalize it and then are more comfortable with allocating dollars to, that, to those strategies? Yeah, um, it's a great question and it's a question that I think technicians have struggled with for uh, many years. And I do think the lingo doesn't help us. So what I like to do is go back to what we said at the outset outcome-oriented investing, trying to deliver some outcome to clients, talking about the role technicals play in supporting that outcome, and when we talk about technicals, use analogies that you don't need your CMT to understand. And I think the, the most important thing to do, there are two things. One, link the fact that technicals reflect fundamentals. So if people believe in fundamental analysis, price is a discounting mechanism for those fundamentals. Right. Things trend up when fundamentals are going well or trend down when they're not. And then just when talking about the depiction of trends, highlighting basically that it's not about moving averages and fancy indicators. It's essentially just trying to get the wind at your back by the right side of a smile and try to capture that and do it at cheap valuations. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one other question. Um, when you're working with, say, for example, institutional clients, yeah. and you take a more active role in managing assets, um, how do you think about or communicate potentially higher uh, levels of turnover, for example, uh, and some of the other, you know, the tax effects necessarily for taxable related yeah. entities. How do you start to think about those things? Because it seems to me that that could be the pushback from a traditional uh, investor that had a fixed allocation and so on and so forth. They want to keep expenses low, transactions costs low. How do you how do you talk the client through that? Yeah, and so every client has their own risk profile and preferences. So I think what you're highlighting are two key concerns that some people may have. Number one, I think you have to be fully transparent and highlight you know what the turnover is the impacts are of these things okay. um, number two when you're fully transparent still highlight how you can deliver a value proposition within those constructs and so I think transparency is key and then highlighting the long-term merit of the approach even if it leads to higher turnover or some tax inefficiency in certain end markets because we're protecting capital yeah so we, we get it from the risk management yeah exactly value the value in the process from risk management Got it. Yeah. Very good. Josh, thank you so much for thank being here so at the symposium much. Yeah. and for your presentation. It was great. And thank you. Thanks.